All right, welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to our panelists. Oh my God, hold on. I know. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's like, very I hard to get on these chairs. It's like a math trick. All right, hold on. Okay, let's get organized. So I want to talk about um, how you each got started, how you became a casting director. Let's go down the line and just, just want to hear your, your story. Tracy. I shouldn't have been seated. Here I'm going to be first with every question. No, no, I'll mix it up. I'll okay, mix it yeah. up. Okay. Okay. Um, hi. Thank you all for coming. Um, how I got, I was working in New York. I was an actress for a minute. Um, and then I, it really, the whole, the overall answer is that I was just lucky all along the way. I had no idea what I wanted to do exactly. Didn't really even know there were independent casting directors. Um, worked in an agent's office in New York. Uh, they had fantastic clients and their really excellent taste became my excellent taste. I really learned a lot. And then one of those agents was leaving to cast soap opera and said, do you want to come with me? Sure. I didn't have any idea what what we were going to do. We didn't last very long, but when I got there, I, I saw this was a really, really good fit and loved it. Amazing. Yep. Nice. Lucky. Um, well, and talented. I'll say Tracy cast my very first pilot ever, and she's amazing. But I say that that was the best pilot I ever worked on that didn't get picked up. It oh, really? Awesome. She did. She One did of the say. best I saw. I could not believe. I still can't believe to this day that it didn't get Thanks. picked up. Thanks. About me, you It guys. was amazing. <laughs> It, anyway, who it are was you? amazing. <laughs> it was so cool. It was so ahead of its time too. It was. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah. Jenny was also my college roommate. Another, <laughs> yeah, at Oakwood, home of the stars in LA. Um, all right, Seth. Uh, I studied acting at NYU, um, and by the end of my first semester, was like, I am not an actor. <laughs> um, and so, why? How did you know that? Oh, because I was real bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the first rule of a casting director to be able to recognize. <laughs> but I also was like, I cannot take a math or science class, so I'm just gonna <laughs> stick out this acting degree. And I got an internship, I think it was like your sixth or seventh semester you were allowed, and it was in a commercial casting office, and I fell in love the first day. And um, sort of just worked my way up in New York in commercials, and then by luck, um, the, there was a movie who could not find the kid and they hired some you know, person on the East Coast to do a search. I was her assistant. We did a search like three weeks and then the executives from Disney came out and they were like, ugh, these people aren't great. And then like the head of casting from Disney came out and she was like, guys, we don't have this kid here and the director's gonna be here tomorrow. And I walked up to them, and I did not know the hierarchy of casting, of LA, of Hollywood, and I just walked up to them and I was like, you're missing the kid. Like, he's a year too young, but you're all missing the kid. And they kind of stopped, and they kind of like looked at me like, who are you? Why are you in this room? And why are you talking to us? And I was, uh, they were like, well, if that's what you think, you better get him back here tomorrow. And it wound up being the kid. The, the, the movie was The Kid with Bruce Willis. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so Spencer Breslin, I sort of, I guess, gave him his break. I didn't start him because he was in commercials. But yeah, and that's sort of how I got started. The women at Disney took a liking to me. They got me my first assistant job with Bonnie Timmerman. So my first movie was Pearl Harbor and that sort of. That little, that little independent yeah. flick. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you said you went to NYU? I did. Uh, were you guys? Uh, I don't think I, no, I graduated in 97, so I don't know when you graduated. I did, graduated. I walked in 98, but graduated in 97. Right. You didn't know each other. I didn't know anybody in NYU. So <laughs> I didn't. Liz, Liz and I went to different schools. It's a long story, but. Um, yeah. Unless you worked at Webster Hall, I didn't know you. <laughs> I was just working. Right. All, I, all I did was, uh, as we can say, right? Um, was, I just, I knew, I knew I was always gonna work on film or television since I was very, very young, like seven or eight years old. Um, so I, um, I went to, I went to NYU for cinema studies, study film history, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I didn't know if I wanted to be a script supervisor or an editor. It was going to be something. So I interned every semester since like freshman year somewhere. It was like at ABC or AMC or Howard Stern or <laughs> different things. And actually when I was working on Howard's movie, because I interned on the radio show so I could work on the movie, um, Obsessed with Howard Stern. <laughs> <this song>. Love. <laughs> oh, 
I, woo! Um, and uh, so I was out working on his movie, and they would have me do like odd jobs and stuff over the weekends just to make money. And um, they were all casting gigs. They were like table reads or um, an open call with like Billy Hopkins. And and I just remember one day coming home and just saying to my mother, uh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Because I have like a freakish, most of us do, uh, for not like memory of actors and movies. And it was like a, it was like a party trick in my family, you know. And because all my mom, my dad, and my sister, they all can do it. My nephew can do it now. <laughs> so, but at that time, I could recall things faster than looking them up in a book, which was the only option you had. There were no computers. There was no IMDb or anything like that. So it was actually an asset. So I went to LA for a semester with, uh, and that's where I met Lizzie. And um, I worked at Universal Studios Television and a casting director there, um, Megan Bremen, just took me under her wing, taught me how to do everything. And then when I moved back to back when I went back to New York, she called over to the only sh Universal show that was shooting in New York at the time, which was Law and Order, and said, "If you need uh, an assistant, you don't have to hire her as an intern. You could just hire her." And I went in, I interviewed, and that was my first job as the assistant on Law and Order. Now, down the hallway at Universal <laughs> was Martin Scorsese's office. <laughs> so um, I, Ellen Lewis, who is Marty's. Uh, uh, casting director, uh, I got to know her, and after about a year at Law and Order, she's like, "Come work." She's from Chicago, and she <laughs> she talks like, "Come, come, come work for me." <laughs> so, um, so that's so I worked for her for eight years, and we did you know all of Marty's movies, but all different all kinds of big you know movies too. So it was mainly movies where I started out in really truly. So that's uh, that's what I did. Amazing. And yeah. did did you guys have experience kind of? working your way up the ranks. I know in the writer's world, we all kind of pay our dues in a wide variety of ways. Did you guys have any kind of awful things you had to do along the way to earn where you are now? Well, I mean, I mean, I did go from literally like the lowest rung, you know, on my way up, but uh, nothing was ever horrible. Ellen was a very fair boss. So it wasn't like any of those like horror stories where you have to go like, go get their dry cleaning or do something that has nothing to do with work, you know. It was always about, it was always casting and it was always, you know, informative. Uh, I, I have like three stories to that. <laughs> yeah. One is my first day I was the assistant on the movie. It was a huge conference room and my boss is behind the desk and there were like two phones and she was like, we're going to roll calls. In New York, you don't roll calls. <laughs> So I was like, okay. <laughs> and I sat down and she's like, I want you to get so-and-so on the phone. And I was like, okay. So I picked up the phone from one end and I brought the phone and turned it around and put it in front of her. <laughs> and she looked up and she was like, I want you to get them on the phone. <laughs> and I thought to myself, like, why? There's two phones there. <laughs> like, you could not. So th I learned, that was like my first awkward, like, and then my, the, the one thing to what you said, she, <laughs> She had a driver, and he would get lunch for us every day. And I walked in and like gave her her lunch, and she was like, "Oh, I want it on a plate." Oh. And I was like, mm. "And I walked out, and I was like, I'm not plating her food." <laughs> like, I'm not yeah, seriously, I have a college education. <laughs> like, she can eat out of the plastic. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was my. And then, like, one of my fun good ones is she would come in in the morning with like napkins, like with you know red wine stains, with hundreds of names. And I'd have to find the actors to get them in or to like check avails. But literally it was like she would just sit in like the bar at her hotel and just like write names. I mean she was so brilliant, like that was her like right. so it was a lot of like That sounds painful. What a doozy. does this say? You know. But awesome. I paid no dues. I'm so lucky, I guess. <laughs> I, I I mean I worked plenty hard, but I, everyone was great and eager to share information and, and train me as we went. It was great. And that's something that we are trying in the Casting Society, really, really trying um, to implement because we have found, and if there are people here who want to get into casting, talk to us um, because we're going to start a training program because there just aren't, as there are more projects in so many genres, um, there just aren't enough well-trained assistants and then associates and then casting directors. So we're trying to help with that. Well, let me ask you that. Just if so, let's say there's somebody sitting in the audience right now who's like, "This sounds great. I want to do this. This is their moment that you guys have already had." Where do they start? Like, what is what? I mean, each of you have your own unique story, but what would you kind of advise someone who wants to do this but might not have any idea where or how to start? Should they be in the training program? 
Well, I'll, I'll jump in. The training program is in the works. I mean, it's going to be a real education. So it's going through the process of becoming a, you know, like a course that you would take at a university, per se. So that's not ready yet. My best advice, and you might agree as well, is to, you know, much like an actor, you got to, like, you know, bang down the doors, send out your resumes, try to get in. I mean, it's extremely hard in California now with internships and the government and, you know, all that stuff. But intern... Do you mean because you have to be in college to get an yeah, internship? Or? Yeah, and there's and a lot still there's a lot of rules on in that. California. So just check wherever you live. If it's Austin, it might be a, a different scenario. Just for legal purposes, we have to say that because we're on the CSA oh, board. Oh, um, so, you know, I think internships are amazing because you actually learn. I mean, when we all started... We went through envelopes with headshots, like, and literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of envelopes with headshots. Now you have a lot of online casting, so we would be able to look at a picture, turn it over, read a resume, and that's why I think we probably all have a vast knowledge of so many actors, like, you know, in our head because you touch them almost right. in a way as opposed to just clicking on it. And you also got to see what agents represented who, and you kind of got to get the sense of what their taste was and what they, who they gravitated towards. You know, comedy people or musical comedy people or... or who were the theater just, agents? Yeah. Who were they the TV the agents? They got the lay of the land a little more easily. Yeah, I mean, I think still to this day, though, I mean, for me, um, you got to, unfortunately, I think, work for free um, first. I don't think there's really any... I don't know. I the my associate who's been with me now for almost five years. She was my intern for a few months. I had another associate at the time, and then, um, you know, we're freelance. We go from job to job. So sometimes there's a couple. There's a you know there could be a month down. There could be a couple months down. So I had finished a movie. I didn't have anything coming up. So I gave my associate to one of my friends because in New York it's a very small casting community, and they're all like really good friends. So it's like here you take Jamie because I don't have a job right now. Um, and then, and then you can like take her back. Well, if I if she, if she was available, yeah. But then she was working again, so I so I called my uh, intern at the time, um, and she was available, and she I hired her as an assistant, and she's been with me for five years, you know. And I'm just I'm sharing a movie with her now, so it's a you know it's it is you have to kind of put it in your. I think the right way to do it is to put in your time. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who just think they can become casting directors because they've worked in a casting office for like a day. And I come from a school of casting where, you know, my boss came up, uh, uh, you know, my boss's boss came up under Mary Doherty, and then Juliet Ellen came up under Juliet. I came up under Ellen. It's like a, a lineage that's very kind of important to us. And Nowadays, I just feel like there are like assistants that just want to be a casting director right out of the gate, and I just don't know how um, how good that is for our for our business or for casting in general or for work ethic in general. It's also just like the millennials. No offense if like you guys are out there or whatever. It's that thing of like, oh, I could just I'm the best, so I'll just do this and I'll be casting director, you know. Whereas you know when you when you grew up like in the 70s or 80s, it's a totally different kind of work ethic. So. Um, but yeah, I do think the only way, because I wouldn't hire somebody as an assistant unless they've already done assistant work. So it is sort of a catch-22. Because casting directors do things very differently from office to office. That's the thing. Like, we, we all have like a baseline of stuff that's yeah. the same. But I've worked for a few casting directors, and they couldn't be more different. And they get the same job done. And it's, it's, it's one know? of those jobs where you're like, okay, it's the same job where you're, you know, auditioning actors, you're putting them in a show. But every job, because you have a different director, a different producer, nothing ever is the same. And when you think you have a, like, you know, a formula figured out, they're like, really? I don't want my session sheet looking like that. And you're like, oh, oh okay, well, I guess I'll type it another way, you know? So yeah, it, yeah. literally the job is like ever changing almost. And you sort of have to be a chameleon to whoever you're working with or for. Right, so, right. Well, you, yeah, you always have a different boss, but yeah. yet you have your own strong opinions and skill set that you're trying to kind of work within these confines. Let's talk a little about the pilot process, because I would love to kind of, when you say there are many different ways of doing things and everybody has a system, um, can you guys explain a little bit once, you know, Tracy, maybe once, once you're hired on a pilot, how do you hit the ground running? Like, where do you start? 
Someone hires you, what happens next? They hire you and they wish they had hired you, or they, they act yeah. like they've hired you a week ago. <laughs> so, you know, by the next day they want to know when you're having sessions and, you know, who's, who's available and all that. Yeah, you're, you're, you're late on day one. Um, and that is the feeling that sticks with you through the whole thing. Very, very stressful. That first week is hell. Because, as Jen said, we work independently. So some of us, lots of us work independently. And we lose our associates. And we move literally from studio to studio. So imagine if you had to set up your office anew under the most stressful circumstance, and you might be working with somebody you've never worked with before, who doesn't know how you like things. You're literally in a new space. You're schlepping your boxes in with your notebooks and things. You don't know where to get a pencil. You don't know who to be polite to. You don't know anybody's <laughs> phone number. I mean, it's a horrible. And the second you put out a breakdown, which you're anxious to do, you know what that is, where you release the roles and what you're looking for, a thousand million. You're attacked. Used to, yes, you're attacked by every it is. It's like a, it's, it's, an it's a barrage you cannot imagine. And it used and to that only agent, be phone that calls. Agents? It's agents, agents and managers. Manager. Okay. And it used to only be phone calls, but now everybody has your email address. And you literally get hundreds of emails within the first few hours that you release a breakdown from people who expect you to respond to those emails. It isn't just a pitch. It's a pitch with, I get mad if I don't hear back from you. So, I mean, the first week is hell, and you're just trying to get your bearings and, and move as fast as you can. And in a typical pilot season, which is when so, I mean, you can talk about how it's different <laughs> at Fox now, but there still is sort of yeah. a pilot season. Right. And we're all vying for the same actors, and so and everything gets picked up at different times, so you, you again, are behind. Um, mm -hmm. And you're just desperate for information, who's available, who's not, who you know wants to do a multi-camera half hour, who would never do a multi-camera half hour, and you're just go, go, go. And so go. talk about a little, like, so what do you do? It's obviously super chaotic from the start. You're setting everything up, but you're also making lists. Do you already, do you kind of come in and get the job? When you come in to, I guess, interview for the job, do you have those kind of prototypes in your head that you're already kind of selling the producers on? Are you? I don't. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm no. so happy to hear you say no, because that. I don't, if I, if I interview for a job, I'm not going to come in and give you all my ideas yeah, unless but you, you hire me. But yeah, I always a, think that that's but like But there's a, a whole idea. new thing. I never, ever brought a list I still, to a meeting. I still don't. And I, well, but um, Tracy, but I don't do anything by the book, so I <laughs> should be kicked out. But you very do soon. get criticized. I mean, many, many people have lost jobs because they didn't come with names at the interview. And then this a little bit speaks to what Seth was saying that you have to figure out who you're dealing with each step of the way. When when I interviewed for the New Girl pilot, I went in with ideas. I mean, that's who I am. Like I'm, you know like picture books, I like my charts, and I like my little square pictures of faces with names and credits, because I like to be prepared. So <laughs> I, I, I went in there and you know presented who I would have cast in the main four roles. And we talked about it, and then we left, and I was driving home, and my phone rang, and they were like, it's Liz Merriweather, Brett, and Dave for you. And I was like, OK, great. And I was all like, here's the job. <laughs> and they were like, so we really like you, but we're just a little nervous that your ideas are a little networky. <laughs> and I was like, OK. I'm like, you do know you're working for Fox, right? <laughs> like. This is when I was an independent. I was still an independent casting director. And they were like, yeah. And I was like, look, UCB, IO, like the Groundlings, that's my jam. Like you want the, like those people? And I just started like talking them through names of people who were performers, who were not like, you know, going to get the pilot greenlit, right. but who were amazing at all of these parts. And once they heard that that is who I could deliver, who I knew, where my foundation was, they were like, OK, we want you. Right. And then, of course, I was like, you can't have any of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's interesting, because in a way, I'm sure producers expect, they want you to come in with ideas, because they want to feel like, yeah, we're in the right direction. Right. But of course, if you give an idea that they're, totally, you know, that could backfire. How? Yeah, I, I, was gonna <laughs> <laughs> um, I do feel like our ideas are our, um, our commodity it's like what we have to leverage with so that's why I really don't ever feel comfortable when I interview on a movie or on a TV show or a pilot or whatever uh, to give my information away also the interview is also a way for me to feel out these people too 
I don't know what they're thinking. I read the script, but I don't know what they're thinking. So I kind of use the, the interview as an opportunity to hear what they have to say about what they're looking for in the character. And luckily, because um, of my brain, I can just think of people on the spot, so that's what I do. And, um, and if we jive, and you know, we usually do, and that's, that's how I, you know, I, 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 don't, I can't say I hate television anymore, Liz. Um, I know. <laughs> it's so hard for me because I've, you know, cast features my whole, practically half my life, and then, um, and then Lena Dunham came along, and because uh, I had hated every TV show I had worked on, I quit like two TV shows before that because um, I couldn't deal with uh, the network or the studios. So um, HBO called me like the day after I quit this. Uh, Mitch Hurwitz show that was awful. Um, <laughs> and I got in a fight with Mitch and I quit. Um, and uh, I love you. <laughs> I know, but I was like, find yourself another casting director. So, like, it, literally a day afterwards, um, HBO called and they they know me because I had worked on The Pacific and then I also cast the first five episodes of How to Make It in America and then I quit because those guys are just like douches. So, um, and I told them they were and I was like, see you later. So, um, so, and I thought I was gonna like burn my HBO bridge, but like Sunegal was like, my sweet Jersey girl, what do they do to you? We'll find you something else. I'm like, whatever. So they called me and so I was so bitter. I'm so bitter about television. Like I was just like, fuck this, these people suck. They don't know what they're doing. So then, um, a producer at HBO called me and was like, so we have this pilot. And I'm like, no, I don't want to, I, I just quit a show. And she's like, well, it's this girl, Lena Dunn. I'm like, I know who Lena is because I had seen Tiny Furniture. I'm like, she's cool, she's cool, whatever. And they're like, we want you to, to um, meet with her. And I said, no, I'm not meeting with her. And they're like, we, just meet with her. It's not a big deal. I go, I don't want to meet with her. This is a TV show. I hate you, and like you know, and they're just. I think that we, that it's that weird thing of like, a, like if you like a guy or something, and the guy's just like, no, 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 they want you more. But I wasn't doing it intentionally. I was literally like, I don't want to do this. So they broke me. They're like, just meet with her, because it was also Judd, and I'd worked with Judd Apatow before. So she's like, Judd wants you to meet with her. I'm like, okay. I finally was like, I'll meet with her, but my meeting with her doesn't mean that I'm doing the show. So just so you know that. And they were like, sure. And because they knew Lena, it was, it was a trick because Lena is one of the most charming um, people you'll ever meet. You literally meet her for five minutes and you think she's your best friend. And she does that all the time now with everybody, actors included. And they call me up and they're like, I talked to Lena and I want to be on an episode of the show. And I'm like, yeah, no, everybody is. And uh, um, so we literally, she came to my office and we talked for, um, we ended up talking for two hours. And uh, she, we just really bonded, and she said she told me I was an oversharer, which I just thought I always talked too much. You know, Liz and I know, like I just thought I was a, yeah, like I had to talk too much. And she's like, no, you're an oversharer like me. I'm like, I am. And then, um, and she was just like the sweetest thing. And I was like, okay. And then they called me, and they're like, so we want, you know, she wants you to cast the show. And I was like, okay, all right. This is what I'm gonna do. I'll only cast the pilot, because usually when they hire us to cast the pilot, they hire us for the season, if it gets picked up. I said, I do not want an option. You're not, you're not getting me for the season. I said, I'll just do it like a pilot, and I'll pretend it's a little movie. It's a little half hour movie. <laughs> and um, that's how I talked myself into casting girls, and it was the untitled Lena Dunham pilot, and nobody had heard of her. And, um, and it was Lena's first casting sessions, because on the Tiny Furniture, it was like all her friends and stuff, so we really got to like, you know, teach each other stuff, and it was fun, and, and I loved working with her and Jenny Connor and Judd, and so then the show got picked up, and I was just like, well, that's nice, and then uh, Lena called me, she's like, Jen, you have to do this, I know you don't want to, you have to do it, and I was just like, fine, I'll do it, and, uh, and that's like the end of that, but, uh, but the thing is, I went to the meeting with her, just reading the script, I, don't, I didn't have any lists, I didn't have any ideas, you know, I, I knew who I wanted for Adam, but she wouldn't know who he was, so there would be nothing to like say about that, and um, but yeah, I mean, the pilots, the pilots are different. Like for each, I mean, I'm, I'm like lucky that I get to work with HBO and Netflix, honestly, um, for the pilots and also for the series. Cause I, um, no offense, Seth, I can't work, work for a studio or network. They hate me. I hate them. And, um, and, and good reasons on both sides. And, um, it's just, it's a real, it's a hard process. It's not only casting, it's not only about being creative, it's like being able to deal with the politics of people yeah. and in so many different capacities. Like, you know, there's people at the studio who are like, 
the director of comedy. And I'm like, and what qualifies you to be the director of comedy, you know? Right, right, right. And it's just, and it want, you want to blow your brains out because it's like, <laughs> you're kidding, right? Like, this person's going to tell me this person's not funny. You know, it's like... I work for Will Ferrell. I work for Judd. I work for Madame McC I know the funniest. I work for Larry David. I know the funniest people out there, and this is not funny, you know? So it's, a, it's all politics, and it's really, it's disheartening, and it's soul-crushing, so. Um, get, get into it, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to be a casting director? I would never suggest this job to anyone. Not, not ever, ever, ever. It sucks the you. life out of you. <laughs> well, I want to hear about kind of the different process that you've brought up between kind of casting for cable, casting for network, because obviously they're two different beasts, and, you know, maybe you can speak to kind of the network side of things, yeah, too. Yeah, sure. I mean, I did Eastbound and Down for HBO, yeah. so I worked, I mean... Can when you, you kind of compare? compare? Yeah, yeah to I mean, it's... Look, she's not wrong at all. <laughs> I mean, you know, I you get a freedom when you work at cable that you don't get whilst working with the studio and the network, you know? Um, and yes, there are a lot of people who have jobs who you wonder how they got the job, <laughs> why they have a title, who gave them that title. <laughs> I, I hear it, I deal with it, I have no. to talk to them on a daily basis, you know? Um, <laughs> and you, 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 you do, it's, it's politicking. And the only reason I switched from independent to network, not that anyone asked, was no, I, I, was finishing, I was finishing Rock of Ages, the movie, and the New Girl pilot, and when you're independent, you're like, okay, great, I'm doing the hottest show of the season, and I don't have a job next week. Right. And like, I wanted to get married and have a kid, so I was like, sure, I'll take a big fancy job. Like, you're coming after me this hard, like, great. You know, and was it your success on New Girl that yes, got you that job? Yes, it was because of, it was also the, Empire, as it were, was shifting at Fox in the casting department. The old was leaving and the new was coming in. And I had a style much like yours where you're sort of just like, you sort of just like plow through it and kind of get your way. I mean, that's how I was trained. That's how I did it. You didn't take no for an answer. You got who you wanted at any cost in a way. Like, if you wanted that actor, you know, and much like, you know, Jen, I learned comedy from Vince and Will and Ben Stiller, those were all, and Judd, those were all my original yeah. casting movies. I mean, that's like how I came up in comedy and David Goyer for dramas, like, yeah. I was like, like, don't tell me what's not funny, you know, or right. don't tell me that person's not a good actor. Like, you might want to put them in there because she's real pretty, but she can't act. But that, but that must be so hard to, navigate between even with producers i mean every time sometimes you'll work with people repeatedly obviously who fall in love with right. you and want to hire you again and you're available but um oftentimes you're probably you know starting a relationship over from scratch how do you kind of navigate that and and i don't know uh respect that they have what they want in their head, but that, I guess, for lack of a better word, you might know more. <laughs> but I think you'd be surprised how many times they don't have it in their head. Right. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm casting, a, a, adding a series regular to a show that I do now, and they literally just said you, to me... Oh, you probably can't say what show. No, I can. It's Ground Floor on TBS, okay. um, and we made a cast change, and so we need a new series regular. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's a clip from Ground Floor. Can we bring it up? No. <laughs> Um, so they said, uh, they told me yesterday you're starting on Monday, okay. Oh, wow. um, and I said, well, so what's the role? Mm, either a name or somebody just really funny. <laughs> so I said, well, uh, uh, where's she gonna work? What, what's the story? Mm, she could work upstairs, she could work downstairs. We're not sure how, it, how it's gonna really work best. Hmm, okay. So do I you, said, do you, lo so, okay. No, no, I loathe it. I mean, you would prefer decisiveness, like. It is not my job to create, a, I mean, in some circumstances that could be fun. Not like this. It is not, let the writers do their work. They need to figure out 
stories, arcs, what we need, what foil we need, why the character we fired didn't work, what would be better suited. That's not my job. Right. It's perfectly, I can, I'm happy to say, I just found somebody in Austin who's awesome and funny and maybe you'd like to write them in. That happens often. Yeah. But this situation is, is different than that yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and crazy. See, I, I, don't, I don't mind it. I had, yeah. like, one of my most amazing experiences was on The Hangover. There was the role that eventually went to Heather Graham, but... I, I really, like, it was three scenes. It could have been funny, could have not been funny. It was really sweet. And I wanted Sofia Vergara. She had not done, like, it hadn't, her show hadn't premiered. Yeah. And you laughed when that girl walked in the room. Yes, it, like, was a thing. And it could, you maybe didn't want to watch it for an hour and a half. But, like, it was fucking funny. Like, yeah. undeniably funny. And the scenes were hysterical. And Todd Phillips just, like, couldn't wrap his head around it and couldn't wrap his head around it. But it was the funniest of any actress who read it. And we read everyone. Because, obviously, everyone wanted to work with Todd. And, and it, I went so far as to, like, Todd was like, if you say her name again, I will fire you <laughs> off this movie. Oh but a and movie I was like, is very, very different than series because you have to live with somebody in the series right, right. and you had a role you have words I have no words right 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 and let me ask you this Tracy because you've done both how how much pressure is there to cast a name kind of from I guess the network that. yeah <laughs> well again and this goes back to like sort of what Jen was saying and the difference between you know HBO and or Showtime or Netflix or any of the other 800 cable that are you know, eating my bonus, but that's okay. Um, but, but at the network, look, you have to sell to advertisers. You, not every show has a name in it, you know, um, but it helps. We are in a world of technology where, you know, tweets and Snapchats and Vines and, you know, Facebooks and all of that counts, like, for the marketing of a show. Like, you know, I, I just sat with an actress who was on one of our shows, and she was and she was a Disney star originally, and then sort of, you know, moved into adult acting and works. And she was like, I once lost a job because I didn't have a Twitter account. And she would have been considered a name anyway. <laughs> was someone like, it takes two seconds to yeah. make a Twitter account? Well, no, but I mean, at the, at the moment she would have been hired, someone else maybe had a million and two followers. Right, she, right, right, right. You don't get, get that in. No, no, I get Or it. maybe you do, I don't know. Oh, no, no, I don't you. get that in orange. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how, <laughs> talk, talk about. They didn't even have computers, most of the people I hired are like. <laughs> They were like, because <laughs> they're older women and yeah. stuff. They didn't even have like G email accounts. Red. Uh, How yeah. do you find, I mean, obviously <laughs> Orange is the New Black, which I'm dying to ask you about, is <laughs> one of the best cast shows on television. And I think, to me, seems like the hardest show to cast. How do you do it in a nutshell? <laughs> um, well, let's see. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't sleep. And, um, and how do you I, find, uh, how do you find everybody? Like, some people, I mean, like, from the start, I mean, it's very hard to explain Orange because, you know, it, 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 we, I got the job, uh, like, over Skype. Everybody's in L.A., so I, I met Genji and Tara and Mark over Skype, and then they hired me, and, but it was all shooting in New York, so, but nobody was in New York, so I had this, just the pilot script, and there were characters in it um, that I obviously had to cast for the pilot. There were going to be characters in future episodes that I didn't have yet, um, so I only had, I had very little material to go with. Um, some kind of sketchy descriptions from Gen G, you know, stuff like that. Um, but the thing that she, she, she had said to me was like, you know, which she, she, I got it because of girls, because she likes girls and she likes like all like the real faces and people you've really never seen before. And she's like, I want to do this, but this is like on a much, it's a much bigger, it's a much bigger scope. So, um. So basically, I, I don't know, like, I, I basically, I just dove in. I mean, you just sort of, like, jump off the cliff. There's no, there's no, like, way that you could wrap your mind about it. Like, you know, casting in the first episode, like, 50 or 60 characters in a pilot. And, like, casting, like, Tasty, the only thing she had to do. I was going to ask about Tasty. Well, Tasty, the only thing Tasty had to do in the pilot was in the beginning, in the shower, and she had to um, talk about her little titties and then, um, and then just sing. That was the, the audition scene, okay? So I read a bunch of girls doing that. 
Um, and same thing for like Matt McGorry for Bennett. Yeah, the, it was he was is the only scene in the pilot is when he's taking the the picture with porn stash and they're trying to fix the computer in the pilot. So I mean that's all I had. So basically, and remember, House of Cards had not come out yet. Right. Netflix was not on the map in any way in terms of original programming. I had the only thing that I had going for me was Jen G's name, really, because we there was nobody cast in the show when I started on it, and they made me read everybody. They weren't going to hire anybody without us reading them. So, um, and everybody, pretty much everybody I cast was cast off tape because Jen G was in L.A. So we didn't have, like, I went to L.A. for a couple of weeks and we had some live sessions for Piper, um, but that was it, you know? So, like, those live sessions for Piper, that's where we, you know, we read Laura Prepon, we read Natasha Leone, um, people that we would eventually fit into other parts that we read them live. That was it. I had two sessions for the whole show, and the rest was done over uh, on video. So the kind, the cool thing is, um, sort of when nobody's looking at you, you can kind of get away and do a lot of cool stuff when you're not under the microscope of like a studio or a network, um, <laughs> or the public, or Netflix, or Lionsgate. I got away with murder, basically. You know, they let me loose. They were like, we, you could go to cast whoever you want. I, I had I was taping people, so I had the advantage. If you're in a director session, you know you'll bring your people you love in. They'll do it. You know they could do better. The director doesn't know that. They they leave the room and they don't get the part. When I know somebody can do something, I'm like, okay, we're gonna do it again and we're gonna do it again. And then I only show the good take to the producers and the directors, right. and I win. You know, so um, so that's a good casting director. <laughs> yeah. So so there's like, there's there's the beauty of that, and there's the beauty of the fact that Netflix didn't need a name because, again, this was a whole new new media thing that we were doing. And um, and Genji and I had the same ideas. We knew exactly what we wanted. And it was just it was just a very lucky thing. But it was a lot of hard work. There were nights, my sister and I, it was just these, my sister and I doing these jobs. We would be at work till 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And I would just look at her and be like, who the fuck is going to watch this? I was like, it's on Netflix. It's called Orange is the New Black. There's absolutely nobody in it that anybody's ever heard of. I'm like, what are we doing? And, uh, and, I, and I felt like that during the whole season, all through 13 episodes. I knew it was beautifully written. I was so excited. I got to hire some of my favorite like theater actors. I was so happy. But I was really like, nobody's going to see this. Um, at the end of the day, really. Um, and I loved working with Genji and her, her team because they're all really good people too because that's an important thing for me too because if you're a dick I'm not going to work I just I quit I walk away I'm done because this job is too hard to work with difficult people like there's no way you could do both and if you can you're an amazing person because I certainly can't so so yeah so Orange so just doing Orange was, it was just like this beast I had to sort of battle the first season and um, it was really funny I, I had to do the Michael J. Fox pilot when I was doing Orange at the same time and that was for, for Sony and NBC. And, um, <laughs> and I only did it because the director of the pilot was a director I work with. So he's like, come on, you got to do it. And I'm like, fine, I'll do it. It was like, it was like day and night having sessions for the Michael J. Fox show and having sessions for Orange. Like I literally, <laughs> in the morning, we'd have this huge session for trying to find Michael J. Fox's assistant. And, um, and we, I, you know, they made me read like 200 or 300 people or something. And it was the, the, most unfunny sides you've ever heard. Like, you just wanted to kill yourself. Well, because the repetition is, I mean, the repetition can't kill you at some, some, at some point. But so the, in the afternoon, we had the, it was in the first season of Orange, where Piper has to go to solitary, and there's crazy inmates, and they're all going, I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm going to fucking kill you. And he's like, I'm going to, you know, there's two, two inma inmates that are supposed to be like psycho and screaming horrible things at Piper. And that was the, the, re the second half of our day. And that was the moment that my sister and I realized we were like, it like cleansed our soul. To have these women <laughs> screaming at us the most horrible things was so much better than the shitty like network comedy stuff. And it was just like, that's when I realized this is what I'm supposed to be doing, you know? And that's when I knew that that's my true voice. And it's not to please the people. It's really not. So... So there is like I, so I literally had them next to each other and had to do it at the same time. That and it was amazing. yeah, but it was <laughs> yeah, but here's Go what I want to tell you. I did the first scripted show on HBO, and every we were in a hole in the wall in North Hollywood. Which one was it? 
Dream On. Nobody Love paid Dream a on. bit of attention to us, and now HBO is HBO. Right. I'm now doing a Netflix show. I don't have her experience because they are no, it's fat and happy. Yeah, now they're Netflix. <laughs> and it's... And I don't have your experience, and that's the most polite thing I can say about it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. There is a room hosted by Netflix. I know, I know, Everyone and they're probably here. <laughs> like. We will, yeah, be parting down with I'm Netflix I'm sorry, later. Tracy. They've it's been not like, the Wild West anymore. Well, it's them. also for me, it's Lionsgate mainly, because yeah. it's Lionsgate and Netflix, yes, and Lionsgate, in, yeah. In fairness, it's, you know, your, your studio, studio really yeah. determines yeah. a lot of your health yeah. or right, not. Right, right. Who's your I, studio? I, I, okay, I, I, I'm going to... I will say, can okay. I just say one yes, thing? Only absolutely. because I, yeah. as a network executive, I've taken... I know, I just bash all him. Just like, no, no, so it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I get a really big paycheck. I'm good. Like, seriously. I, like, but truthfully... I made it, because I was an independent casting director, I was in the room until 10 o'clock at night. Like, you were, you know, literally, I mean, Liz Merriweather did not know who Max Greenfield was, and they were like, you're, I was not allowed to bring him into the first two producer sessions, and I snuck him into the second one. And thank God, like, I was like, fuck you, you don't know. Like, I mean... (laughs) Oh, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, absolutely. But I made it a rule when I took the job at Fox that I would not be the networking network right. casting person right. where like I called someone who was super creative, knew what they were doing, had experience and been like, now see these 200 people. Like, I like to talk to my casting director. I like to find right. out because she's on the front line with the <coughs> creators more than we are. So, and shit changes so quickly that like she'll know they want something. Yes, there are people we will not hire and people we will hire. So flowing information yeah. makes everybody's job easy and makes mine easier than like some of the other crazy crazy well, network people and it must be it must be so great to have someone like you in the role where you've really been on both sides of it and can be much more of kind it of a go between it is so great yeah that makes a huge difference. All right, I'm going to open it up to questions. I just want to, I have so many more questions I want to ask. I am so bummed that time is running out. I just have to ask one thing really quick and then we'll open it up. Do's and don'ts of actors when they walk into a room. I'm a weird person where I get really uncomfortable when anyone's acting too close to me. So I, I but, I, and I, I feel like super caretaky about people and I, I like, I don't know. I never know quite what's happening and I always feel really, um, <laughs> like I just want to hug everybody. What, 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 People walk in and kind of, what's a common mistake that you would say, don't do that, do this? Like dressing I'm, the part. I'm just going to say this. Like, feel the energy in the room. If you think you're doing something weird or like, <laughs> you know, you're getting too close or like if you walk in and you see the body language of the casting director, like your actors, you're supposed to be in tune in the moment with what's going on. Like, it's probably way more awkward if you've already realized it's a little weird. So like back up, shut down, stop talking, go to like the X and get ready to like do what you're there for. And then like feel out your audition and to to have the conversation. I was a talkie casting director because I liked, loved actors and like thrived off it. And you know, you want these people to be so successful. So but some actors want to come in and just do their jam, so you'd yeah. be like, hey, and then I would shut up, do it, and then I want to like find out how they are. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I, I, I am like a people pleaser in some ways, not to, I know that sounds weird because I've asked <laughs> all the things I've just said, but I've, I've over really, share. I, you know, after all the things I've just said, it doesn't make sense, but I actually am, a, I'm, a, I'm like a caretaker, so I want the actor, if they're just reading with me, you know, it's just, Come in, say hi, whatever. We'll talk. I just want everybody to feel as comfortable as possible in the room with me. I don't want somebody like sides shaking. Yeah. So I'll stop them when they're reading and just be like, "Dude, calm down. Like this is so not scary and it's fine." Um, I don't like it when actors like um, touch the person who's reading with them because I was the reader for a very long time oh, and that God. that would happen. Yeah, that's scary. And that's not you don't do that. <laughs> um, and I feel like handshakes are you should like go for what the person you're meeting. If the person gets up and wants to shake your hand, then do it. But don't be the person like sticking your hand in their face and doing it because it'll sort of because handshakes are weird now too because so many people don't want to shake hands. Yeah. Um, and uh, I like to make out. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, so yeah, but if it's a director session, if it's a director session, it's my job to make everybody feel comfortable in the room, including the director and the producer and the actor, and like make sure they have a nice thing. Anybody questions? Are you guys good? Okay, should we give it a go? Let's go. And like that's what I do. So I mean, I don't think there's like a lot of do's and don'ts. I do hate it when people are like, "Can I have a moment?" And they turn say, around. That's that's uncomfortable. That's it's when uncomfortable I get really for like. Don't take a moment. Take your moment outside. Your moment was outside. Yeah, yeah. It's like you had your moment, yeah. you know. I do feel like any success that any actor has is so deserved based on the brutalness of going through the casting process because it just seems it would be really hard to sit in a room with like a hundred of yourselves yeah. all vying for the same thing at the same time. No, like I, nothing else is set up like that. I was just here in Austin yeah. like two weeks ago with an acting teacher and I said to the kids, I was like you really need to be so prepared because, and I don't want to scare anyone, but there are literally 20 to 30 people that kind of look just like you, <laughs> sort of looking at you, maybe f f you know, four or five are there, but there's like 22 more coming later, and everybody wants the job, yeah. you know what I mean? So like, you really fight for it, man. Yeah. Go get it. Yeah. They've ready? said, no, they've yeah. said it. All I mean, right. Yeah, no, go good. ahead, go, no, go. Let them ask. All right, all right. Do you guys have questions? Okay. Hi. Um, you guys were talking about these great ensemble shows, you know, uh, Orange is the New Black, Girls, New, uh, New Girl. And the on screen chemistry I know is really important, but did you guys ever focus on the off screen chemistry to bring these people together to create that? That's what publicity chemistry? and marketing is for. <laughs> That's a great question, though. I mean, it does seem like... Yeah, well, Genji on, on Orange from day one was like, we have a no assholes policy. So don't bring me actors who are assholes. And, like, we all know who the dicks are. So <laughs> I didn't. I mean, the people that, you know, because you do know people, actors get a reputation from either other actors or projects or producers. So we kind of know, and even their own agents, actually. Um, so we know who's difficult. So that was like, that was like one of the number one roles on Orange was like, every actor, I want them to be like cool, nice people. So I lucked out that all my, pe my people were, I mean, I'd known a lot of them, so I knew they were going to be okay. There were a couple I didn't know, so I was like, God, I hope they're all right. But... Um, everybody was really sweet. And the thing is, on Orange, they like came together like as a community, which I've never seen before in my life. At the rap party for season one, we were, my assistant and I were like, what's going on here? They're all dancing with each other and they're hugging each other, loving each other. And, you know, porn stash is dancing with like, Mad you know, Madeline Brewer's mom, you know, uh, what's her head's mom, you know, like hangs herself. Um, and everything's like, and you're just like in the surreal world. I'm like, and they all know each other and they hang out and they're just like great friends. So that's the first time I've ever seen that in action, you know, truly. But also you have to remember, um, on a, television series, you can start with four people like we did on Will and Grace, mm -hmm. who nobody has ever, ever heard of. Right. And they become very quickly really big television stars. And imagine how their lives change yeah. so fast. So they're sort of dealing with all of that and each other mm -hmm. and everything that goes with right. starring on a television series. So they need a, each other. They have yeah. to become a family yeah. outside immediately to sort of survive this like insanity right I mean that's yeah. kind of what happened on New Girl I mean yeah. Zoe was really the most famous person and you know yeah. but like they all sort of instantaneously much like your cast on Girls right away you know mm -hmm. yeah. they all so they literally had to stick together yeah. all the you know yeah that's interesting sometimes you know the opposite you know that oh yeah stories are oh yeah well I mean yeah, and yeah, and you can come together. I mean, I think you can come together as four unknowns, and as you become knowns, it could have a very different effect. You never, you know, you don't know. Oh, yeah. When it works out. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you guys are all real strong proponents of people that you really believe in and are kind of mavericks in it. And I was curious to know, for people that are sort of not at that star level that have that great cachet, um, but do you have a great uh, social media following? Do you kind of push that? Like you had mentioned that one of your talents lost out on a job because they didn't have a Twitter account. Would you use that as sort of leverage to kind of push um, the directors and, and producers into, into hiring stuff? <coughs> Say, look, they've got you know 20 million followers. They've got a huge uh, baseline, even though that they haven't got to that marquee level. 
the network person in me is going to say yes, yes, and the independent casting director no is going to say no way. <laughs> kind of repulsive, I think. And I want to puke. Yeah. <laughs> and if anybody ever said that to me on the phone, even if it was you, I'd be like... <laughs> I wouldn't, actually. I'd be like, get the fuck out I of here. Wouldn't. I'd be like, I'm going to hang up on myself for especially you. If so- <laughs> especially if somebody has 20 million followers, they don't need me to be an advocate for them. <laughs> you know? it's, it's, and you want to know what? It's never like in a huge part. It really winds up being like a one line or like a cameo or something where if they're in that scene, we can target their fan base in marketing. It's not like, please have Piper be you know, Brittany Ferlin, who's the number one Vine girl. Like, cause no, it just, and I know that cause I just had to meet with her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to my life at the network. <laughs> what are we going to see her in soon, yeah, Seth? I mean, six seconds of her holding her dog. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> Seriously, she's real. <laughs> I'm in New York, so I see everything I possibly humanly can. But when I was younger, when I was in my 20s, I used to go to UCB all the time. Like when it first opened, you know, I mean, I was 22. I was around the same time when Amy Poehler and those guys started it. So I was going to UCB way before and stand up. I was like obsessed with stand up comedians. So I went to a lot of like comedy and stand up. And as I made a little more money, I was able to go to like shows, Broadway shows and off Broadway shows. Um, And, uh, yeah, so I go to, I, I mean, a lot of the people that are on Orange are all theater actors. I mean, that's why you've never seen them before, but they're good, you know? It's like, they've been working for 20 years, you know, on the stage. So uh, I do, that's how I, f- I find a lot of people like that. But I've also been doing this um, almost 21 years. So you really learn, especially in New York, because it's a small community. I know all the actors, you know? It's not like LA, unfortunately, where you can know a lot, a lot. Because I've worked in LA, too, for a while, and it's... It's infinite in LA, it's just infinite. I mean, they just get off the bus. Like, they're just like, they're, and so it's really hard to, to really, you know, know everybody. And yeah. I'm lucky that I have this smaller community where I could really like dig my teeth into people and like, you know, know what they've done. So it's also what I'm ex- trying to explain to a director why they're good for it. It's like, well, I saw them do this and I saw them do this because I've seen them do so many different things than what you've just seen in the room. So right. that helps me. And but right. you guys have shows in LA too, so. I have generals at the bus station. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you guys, I wanna ask, cause we have about five minutes left, a few just kind of rapid fire questions down the row. What is your most proud moment um, as a casting director? What's the thing you're most proud of, of what you've done? Tracy. <laughs> Jen. <laughs> You'll start at the other end. Okay, come on. I, oh. I, that kind of stuff, I don't know. I don't feel pride about that. You don't? I, I don't know. We I don't, don't take be- pride in stuff like that. I don't know. I don't, I don't ever say I discovered someone. I don't. You never would say Yeah, that. you never. <laughs> I don't. No, no. I we don't. Either. It's hard to say you discovered someone unless they're a kid actor. Or you pick them off the street and they've right. never acted a day in their right, life. Right, right. You know? Because usually when someone becomes a star, they've been doing it for like 10 years. It's just you might have gotten them their first big job that they broke. I mean, Max Greenfield has been on every TV show right, in right. history as a guest star for two or three episodes. So, But Sean Hayes hadn't ever done an episode of television. See? I will add all right, that. all right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, all right, this is a humble, all humble. Right. humble. Well, a humble <laughs> when Adam Driver got nominated for an Emmy this year, and he was the only person I brought in for the role, there you go. There I think you I go. can be kind of proud about that. <laughs> all right, good, good. I like that. Yeah. What about a casting regret? Do you guys, you probably can't say a regret of someone who did get cast that you didn't want to, but was there a regret of someone who didn't get cast that you knew was so right for something? Sophia Vergara. <laughs> you know that one. Need a minute. <laughs> I mean, there are compromises, and you do sometimes have to, unfortunately, you know, because we, at the end of the day, don't make the decision. So you hope that you have the same vision as the director or the producer and that you all agree on the same person, but that doesn't always happen, and, and there's a lot of times when you know you were right, and then when the person bombs, you're like, yeah, see, I told you that I was right. <laughs> and so there is some, like, nice, there's some nice, there's comfort in that, and, um, and, and ter- yeah, and regrets, I don't, I don't know. I mean, nothing. There's two things in no casting. No one is proud, and no one regrets <laughs> anything. Wait, there's two things in casting that we can rely on. One 
is that we were usually right. Mm -hmm. And I just lost the other one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> casting directors are like know it all. Oh, and we're we like, will yeah. always get blamed when it doesn't go right. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Right, right, right. What yeah. about what? Pro nothing that you're working on now, but if there was something out there on TV that you wish you could cast, what would it be? <laughs> on, on TV, it has to be on TV. Well, I guess not. We'll open it up for you. You have some mixed feelings. Uh, yeah, no, I know. Well, I'm a big like uh, sci-fi nerdy geek fantasy stuff, so it would be like Doctor Who because um, one of my best friends cast it in London. He's an amazing casting director. He kind of looks like you actually, and um, Andy Pryor, and he's amazing. amazing at what he does, what amazing and handsome casting director. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's he, what he does on Doctor Who is incredible. He really is. So that would be, probably be the show that I would like trade him for. Like we talk about sometimes trading things, you know, like I'll come over there and do that and you come and do this. Um, not like that kind of, it was fan, it's like fantasy casting world. But um, yeah, it would probably be Doctor Who, I'd have to say, because I just want to cast like aliens and like just people, you know. You have a show yeah. at Fox that you. <laughs> <laughs> not available. Yeah. Uh. All um, right, you guys. Thank you so much. I'm so sad we're out of time. You guys have been incredible panelists. This is so much fun. Thank you.